Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach. Before I start, first kill graphic novel. I got 10 more pages from The Colorist. Here's five of them. I'm just in utter shock at how good this book is. Oh my gosh. Mind Your Business print file is complete. Knife Hand Blind Spot print file is complete. I'm just waiting to get the invoices from the printers and then I will pay for that. And then once the print invoice has been paid for, I'm going to start up a last chance Indiegogo campaign. If you missed out on Knife Hand Blind Spot, if you missed out on Mind Your Business, the books are printed in increments of 1,000, so there's usually extra copies left over. So the last chance will actually be a rolling campaign that will stay open. It will first be for Knife Hand Blind Spot and Mind Your Business, but the next book to come out should be Jawbreakers Forever, so then it'll just segue into Jawbreakers Forever, and then Rock and Roll Ninja, and then Iron Sights 3, Impossible Stars 2. So much movement on every single front. It's insane. So I'm working my way through the and the Senti Daredevil issues, and I'm having a great time. But one thing I'm noticing, and I'm sure that Anne did this on purpose, is how much of a sanctimonious asshole Daredevil is. In two or three issues, he's about to get his ass kicked by an entire gauntlet of his villains. And I remember that issue came out when I first started reading comics. I had none of the context, so I was just like, oh man, that's so messed up. And now I'm just like, hit him again, ammo! This isn't a review of this issue per se. I already did that in a community post. But it starts off with Daredevil in this very jaunty pose. Saying, just don't be so arrogant about it, okay? Obviously, Anacenti is setting him up for a fall due to his sanctimony. But he's hassling this three-card Monty dealer. And the guy's like, give me a break. Not even the cops bust me. What's your point? And he's like, nothing. You just bother me. But even he's starting to realize, he's like, uh, I'm outside the law, yet I enforce it. I'm the ironic contradiction to the system. Or am I just fooling myself? Later, he goes to shame Foggy for working for the Kingpin, except for Foggy didn't know he was working for the Kingpin, and almost immediately quits after finding out. But Matt is just reveling in degrading him for it. To which Foggy's girlfriend rightfully calls him a moral bully. So they've had this saying for the last few years, all cops are bastards, which to me sounds very like middle school. <laughs> it's like you're skateboarding and they keep hassling you. All cops are bastards, man. But one of the things that I've noticed more and more that bothers me about superheroes is when they want to try to become the morality police. When really it's just an excuse to be sanctimonious and beat people up. I did a video years ago about how most superheroes break down into the cop category, which I assigned Spider-Man and Daredevil to, and the soldier territory, which would be guys like Captain America, obviously. But the more I think about it, a real hero is just going to usually fall into the guardian angel, good Samaritan. One of my favorite things about Spider-Man is so many of his stories involve him using his powers just to get from point A to point B. You open with a splash page and he's like, oh boy, I've got to get this Smucker's Jam to Aunt May because she's almost out and then he will stumble upon something. The other one is just him reveling in his powers. There are dozens of Spider-Man stories that open with a splash page of him swinging across the city and saying, it's such a nice day out. I thought I would just web swing and enjoy my life. One of the things I hate most about superheroes is when they go on patrol. It's like, dude... You're not a cop. You're not a soldier. <laughs> we didn't vote for you. We don't have any oversight for you. You're just a random guy who did a lot of push-ups. There's all these videos of people shoplifting at stores because some cities will say, we're not going to prosecute shoplifting below a number that's usually fairly high, like $900. So a lot of people will watch these TikToks and they're like, why isn't anyone doing anything? It's like, because some dude is stealing a lot of degree antiperspirant from a drug store. The funny thing is that when confronted, which is usually just being blocked from leaving with the stolen merchandise, the shoplifters who were not going to be prosecuted then start tearing down displays, throwing cash registers, which is a completely different crime that does get prosecuted. Then they'll start picking up heavy objects and throwing them at people which is assault, 
which still gets prosecuted. It's like, dude, you could steal $899 worth of things, but you can't wreck the store and assault people. But I am kind of rethinking the whole superhero thing. It's like, what are you doing, dude? Mind your business. <laughs> this guy's doing three-card Monty. And he even gives a justification. He's like, I'm just giving folks one of life's lessons. I toughen them up for the next guy. People like to get all up in arms about things, but honestly, at some point, if you fall for it, that's just a life lesson waiting to happen. All these people tattletailing on Liver King. He's not natty. Yeah, and the mall Santa isn't the real Santa, and he also doesn't know the real Santa. Like, grow up. Anyway, thanks for watching. First Kill Graphic Novel. Let's get another look at these amazing pages. Unbelievable. And then I'm going to go create that last chance Indiegogo page, but I'm not going to launch it until the invoice has been paid. Because at that point, it's a real simple ask, as they say. It's like, hey, I've already finished these books. They've already been ordered. There are extra copies. If you want to get in on the fulfillment, which should start in a week or so, order the book. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.